Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Somebody raise your hands and speak in other tongues. Raise your hands and speak in other tongues. Tell God you are awesome. Tell Him, God, you're lovely. Tell him, God, you're beautiful. Come on, somebody speak another tongue. 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 Come on, somebody. Spirit of God is going to heal tonight. He's going to deliver tonight. He's going to set free tonight. He's going to uplift tonight. I feel something special this evening. Come on, somebody, raise your faith to something I has not seen. He has not heard and has not entered the hearts of man. God can do the impossible. God is doing impossible things tonight. God is working mightily in our lives tonight. I feel the praise of God. You make my life so good. As you are. Quiet singing. You make my 
Southwest to God. Words can't express what it means to us. Thank you, God, for Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Very common scripture. But it's also going to take an uncommon turn. Let's open there. Now, the Bible says as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Praise the Lord. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. And the next verse says, But God has revealed it of them and to us by his spirit. The Bible says, For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. The spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Somebody say, Amen. amen. In Isaiah 48, there was a time God is speaking to the house of Jacob. And um, the Bible says in the third verse that I declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did them suddenly and they came to pass. Because I knew that thou art obstinate and thy neck is an iron sinew and thy brow brass. It says, I have even from the beginning declared it unto thee before it came to pass. I showed it thee, lest thou should say, Mine idol has done them, and my graven images and my molten image have commanded them. And the Bible says, And thou hast heard, see all this, and will not she declare it? I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou did not know them. You did not know them. And they are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou hadest them not. Least thou should say, Behold, I knew them. You see that? Give me the message of that verse. The seventh verse. He says, This isn't a variation on the same old thing. This is new, brand new. Something you'd never guess or dream of. When you hear, you won't say, I knew that all along. Praise God. And the next verse says, Yeah, thou had a snot. Yeah, thou knowest not. Yeah, from the time thine ear was not open. For I knew that thou wouldst deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor from thine womb. God was dealing with people he wanted to give a lot to. But there was something wrong with them. Hallelujah. There was something wrong with them. He could not give them too much. He could not give them too much. Even when he could show certain things to them, their eyes were closed and their ears were closed. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Say amen. But now in the New Testament, God has no reservations to give us. Why? Because we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. He does not expect you and I to transgress against the word. Because he knows that you and I are begotten of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God in living and abiding forever. Somebody say amen. God has trusted us with too much because of our nature. He doesn't worry about how much is on us and in us. Somebody say amen. Sometimes I want to share certain things and I pray to God to give me the grace to be able to articulate them in the language many of you will understand. 
That's why I guess Paul says sometimes that you may pray for us that we might have doors of utterance. Because sometimes the agitations of our spirits cannot be fully interpreted in the language of men. Because the language of men is limited. If you understand what I'm saying. That is the difference between the celestial and the terrestrial minister. The terrestrial minister can only minister as far as his words come. The celestial, he has to have the grace to go beyond what can be articulated in human language to communicate. And the doors of utterance begin from a celestial understanding. Not a terrestrial, but from a celestial understanding. The physical me is speaking to you, but there's a spiritual me speaking. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's forming up in your spirit and in your mind, and you are processing things. That's what the Bible calls comparing spiritual things with spiritual things to them which are spiritual. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, which things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things and spiritual things. Give me the Amplified. The Amplified says, and we are setting these truths forth in words not taught by human wisdom. He says, but they are taught by the Holy Spirit, combining, the Bible says, and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Ghost. If you don't possess the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand what I'm saying. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand what I'm saying. I don't judge people who don't understand me if they don't have the Holy Ghost. I understand. They are not meant to understand me because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when the Bible says that when we are speaking these things, our ministry, that's what I'm saying. Every person must know. That there are two folds of your ministry as an individual. There is a spiritual minister and there is a physical minister. The guy speaking to you right now is physical, terrestrial. What you are hearing is terrestrial. But entering inside your spirit, it becomes celestial. Hallelujah. And that is why he says we don't speak words that like are taught by human wisdom. Human wisdom cannot be enough to explain to you the agitations of the spirit of God. The convictions of the word of God. The word of God is too much for a physical man to understand. That is why sometimes we can preach to you something and your head fails to get it. They say, it's too much, apostle. You're speaking so fast. You're speaking too much English. Yes. But you see, the spiritual man is not speaking English. Hey! The spiritual man is not speaking what? English. He's speaking another language. English is slow. English is limited. Even though you may not understand what I'm saying physically, in the spirit you understand it. If you know how to receive by faith. Praise God. You know how to receive by faith. Praise the Lord Jesus. So he tells us that these words are taught by the Holy Spirit. And those words lead us to compare spiritual truths with spiritual language. Okay, this is a truth set forth. What is the true and deep interpretation of the spiritual language to explain this truth? Am I making sense? Am I making sense? You see, many people, many of our saints in the body of Christ, the church of Christ, majorly in Uganda, I cannot speak for the whole world, we have a very huge number of people who are dull in the spirit. Dullness of spirit. They are unable to bear. Praise the Lord. If they tell somebody, are you ready to receive this? Right? So they say, yes, I'm ready to receive it. Receive. I receive it. Receive a new job. I receive it. Receive marriage. I receive it. Receive a car. I receive it. Receive your next page in ministry. I receive it. Receive your deliverance. I receive it. And then you look at a person. They've been receiving for all of their years. But nothing has changed. <laughs> nothing has changed. They scream. They do everything. But nothing has what? Changed. They said, hey, Mukama, 
How be it that I've been receiving all my life, but nothing is changing? Can I show you a pattern? Eh? Let me show you something in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 2. The Bible speaks of... Okay, if you begin from the beginning, it speaks of the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel. And these Proverbs are to the extent, listen, that a man will, number one, listen, he says, to know wisdom and instruction. Are you hearing? To what? Number one, to know wisdom. To know. See how Proverbs come through? See how understanding comes through? I want to show you how to complete the whole cycle. From receiving something to giving it to, to allowing it to work through you. Am I making sense? Number one, he says, these are to the extent, because these Proverbs are like any other part of Scripture. It's all the wisdom of God. Do you agree? Now, number one, to know wisdom and instruction. That's number one. Number two, to perceive the words of understanding. Did you hear that? One is to what? To know wisdom and instruction. Two is to what? To perceive the words of understanding. Right? Number three, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. In other words, you cannot receive what you don't perceive by understanding. And you cannot perceive by understanding what you don't know by wisdom. Are you seeing where I'm coming from? So, you know wisdom. To know wisdom. That is how, we, let's go back to verse 2. To know wisdom and instruction. Semicolon. To perceive the words of understanding. You see that? God gives you the knowledge of wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom. Did you hear that? And justice and judgment and equity. And number four, and to give. Now, this is you which has received. You give subtlety to the simple. And he says to the young man, knowledge and discretion. When that young man receives it, he also gets the knowledge of wisdom, right? And instruction to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom. And he also gives wisdom to them which are simple. And that's how the cycle goes. Number one, to what? To know. Number two, to what? To perceive. Number three, to what? To receive. Number four, to what? To give. So say, I've been receiving all my life. Nothing is changing. Let me tell you why it's not changing. You are receiving what you don't perceive. And you perceive what you don't know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? You cannot give what you have not received. And you cannot receive what is not perceived. And you cannot perceive what is not what? Known. So do you see the place of knowledge? And all of these are parts of wisdom. There is a wisdom to know. There is an understanding to perceive. And there is a what? A wisdom to receive instruction. Instruction is twofold. Instruction is twofold. Let me give you the first line of instruction. The first place of instruction, for example, is if I tell you something and I take time to teach you in the same. Right? For example, I open a topic and I say that um, God is good. And I take one hour explaining to you what I mean by God is good. Do you hear me? That's one place of instruction. I have instructed you in the way of the Lord for one hour about the goodness of God. Right? There are also things that come by experience. Of the things that are the total sum of what I've experienced in God. And I can give you an instruction of one sentence. Don't pray like that. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, let me make it more easier for you. When we were growing up, eh? you just wake up and then you're going outside the gate. Eh? And your parent just says, don't go out. That's instruction. Right? Don't go out. Don't go out. Commando instruction, whatever you call it. That's an instruction. Don't go out. 
Right? And then, there is an age where we could not ask, why are you refusing me to what? To go out. But then there is also an age where I would ask, why are you refusing me to go out? Then your mother takes time to explain to you. You see that is the main road, the car can come, your brain is too small to cross the road. Then they explain to you why you are not supposed to what? But there is an edge, like this guy, I can't tell him, you see, don't cross the road. You see, there are cars which are, that brain can't get it. So I can just tell him, don't touch electricity. I won't explain to him why I'm telling him not to touch it. But because I'm his father, I must expect that he has to trust that I told him not to. Sometimes instructions come like that. Some of you, by reason of experience, it's like, how many of you have done professional jobs? I mean seriously professional. Not traditional management, modern management. I'm talking of you've worked in banks, uh, corporate blue chip companies like MTN, Ware, Airtel, what? You know, you've really gone deep past just selling into something. And then you, you sat up somewhere. How many of you have done something like that? If you have had an experience of professionalism, put up your hand straight. Don't fear. Don't assume me. Good. Wonderful. Now, if you have done a professional job, and then you enter the normal life of the way Ugandans do things, some things can annoy you. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Because when you became professional... They told you things like reporting. Now, if you tell it to someone who has not done a professional job, they think reporting is saying, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm going to report on you to teacher. You understand? <laughs> Am I making sense? Communication. You went to the field to do X. You went to do this and that. Can you make a detailed report of what transpired there? A person who has not sat in a professional setting, they will not appreciate that you need to report. They can go and do things their own way and come back and not tell you anything. Feedback. Basic. Can you give me feedback on this? People who have not worked in a professional setting, they take feedback so negatively. If you tell him, I think you, you're coming lately too much. That guy is on my case. Every time I'm the one he sees who is coming late. Why don't see other people coming late? Listen, the point is not whether he should see other people coming late or not. The point is very simple. You are not supposed to come late. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, even in ministry, we have the same things. In other businesses. That's why some of you say, but why is it that they are saying that we need three years of working experience? Where are we going to get it from? Very simple. Very simple. People don't want to go through again the ABCs of explaining to you the basic things. Time consciousness. We say we begin at 8. If you worked in a professional setting, first day you come late, you explain. Second day you come late, you explain. Third day you don't have anything to explain, they give you a warning later. And copy in the HR. And then the next time you're coming, what? Ali, because you have no what? <laughs> no choice. In professional jobs, they teach you how to respect your immediate supervisor. They can kill you and make you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Today you find people abusing their bosses. You're also stupid. You're, even you, you're stupid. Who are you talking to? You think I gave a damn about this job? Huh? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why I'm praying to God that some people might help our graduates to give them some kinds of courses to make them understand that sometimes what they read in the papers and books is not what really is in the other world. Because in the other world, there's stuff that you're supposed to know if you're going to be a success. It's not by mistake. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making some sense? So, you'll also have problems sometimes. Now, in my professional job, right, I would do something and my immediate boss says, no, don't. You don't even explain to me. He just says, no, don't do that. And I have to listen and know he's saying I shouldn't. But if you go back to think through, this is a person who has been in the bank for 15 years. When he tells you don't do it, he has a reason. That's also some instruction. But it comes a certain way. Don't do this. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the difference between the law and grace. You didn't see where I was going. The law tells you, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt, you know, I cannot even... Eh? I don't know their order. Praise God. I know them, but I don't know which one is 
Eh? First and last. You understand? Because for me to refuse, I failed to get the order. See, the Lord tells you, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. See, grace takes time to explain to you. That's why if you look at the instruction of the New Testament dispensation, it's not the don'ts, it's the thou shall lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Thou shall cast devils in my name and they will be free. It's the thou, you should do this, you will do this, you will do this, you will do this, you will do that, you will do this, and none of these things is you do. And then he explains. The New Testament seeks to give explanation. If you tell somebody, don't steal, he'll ask you, why? Because God doesn't want it. Why doesn't God want it? He just doesn't want it. Why doesn't he want it? He doesn't. Full stop. Am I making sense? But grace, grace explains. Somebody say amen. amen. When you know, and from knowledge you go into perception, and from perception you go into receiving. When you receive, you will give. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that is why we need to teach people how to perceive. Because knowledge is easier to interpret. All you need with knowledge is to receive from truth. Praise the Lord Jesus. If you receive truth, knowledge comes. But many people don't understand the place of perception, perceiving the words of understanding. Let me show you something in Job 11. Verse 6. Give me the message version. Job, in Job chapter 11, verse 6. He says, and he's praying for people, he says, I wish God or he would show you how wisdom looks from the inside. Because many people understand wisdom from the outside. The words we speak, the way we react. I think KJV talks of the double-sidedness of the wisdom of God. The double-sidedness. That the wisdom, the secrets of God are double to that which is. They are double. Double in the sense... Like the message Bible says, there is the wisdom displayed outside. And there is a wisdom from within. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a wisdom from within. Some of you don't know how the wisdom from within looks like. That's why he prays that God would show you the wisdom from within. Not the wisdom from without. There are many people who do wisdom outside. Praise the Lord. But if you weigh it with truth, it's foolishness. Because, see, the whole world has a definition of what they call wisdom. Depending on where somebody is. Even a gang of thieves can say, ah, now you guys are wise, eh? Did you see how the guy stole the money? See, that's their own definition of what? Of wisdom. He's wise in stealing. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are many things outside that could pass for wisdom. And that is why people don't believe in God. The Bible says the word knew him not because of its wisdom. Some people, because of wisdom, don't know God. They think they are too smart not to know God. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? He says, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the word by wisdom knew not God. The word by wisdom knew not God. They are too wise not to know God. That is why he prays and says, I wish you understood true wisdom from within, not from without. There are many things that seem like are right outside, but they are wrong inside. And that is why when you understand the wisdom from within, you understand judgments. That's the beginning of comparing things. There is a person who can speak wisdom and debate an issue and convince people. And people say, wow, there is wisdom in what you are saying." And then when you go in the inside parts from inside... From the inside, you'll be shocked that this is folly. You see, it's like the Bible saying that in the last days the Spirit speaks expressly. That men shall heed unto seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Don't think that those men which the Scriptures speak of, eh? don't think that they'll be speaking obviously foolish things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes, eh? There are many things that seem like they are reasonably right, but they are revelationally wrong. And we are dealing with a church that doesn't know the difference between reasoning and revelation. The gospel is not reasoned. The gospel is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Do you know that 
The gospel is not reasonable. Okay, can I say it again? Do you know that the gospel is not reasonable? The gospel is not reasonable. How did Jesus find a woman who has committed adultery? And the devil is saying, kill her. Kill her. Everybody surrounding with stones. And they are ready to pelt them on her body because she has committed adultery. And this man goes on the ground and writes things that are not readable. And he stands up and he says, let him with no sin cast the first stone. And all of them walk away. And the man which doesn't know sin tells her, neither do I what? Condemn you. Go and sin no more. He walks away. It is not reasonable. The gospel is not reasonable. Can you believe they got Jesus? This guy thinks, I think I can save Jesus' life. He gets a murderer. A thief. What's it called, Barnabas? He gets Barnabas. A thief, a murderer, a guy who has probably done almost the most horrendous things a man could ever do. He puts him here, and then he puts Jesus there. And then he says, choose who I should release. And the people chose Barabbas. In that meeting, I believe that when they were choosing, there was a guy saying, but Jesus made the lame men walk. And there was another guy who also reasoned, beat out and said, Mama, do you know what he has done to the synagogue? Do you know what he has done to the Torah? That guy has blasphemed God. Oh, are you sure he has blasphemed? He has blasphemed. Kill him now. Kill him now. Kill him now. Because blasphemy is worse than stealing. Ay, 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 ay. He has blasphemed our God. Kill him now. Then there's just another one who says, Are you sure? Yeah. But even me, no. But me, I doubt. I don't think. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. Let me even tell you another thing. That guy stole wood. What? He stole wood. Yeah. He stole wood. Yeah. And he was going to make a coffin out of a coffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill him. Kill him now. Kill him now. Kill him now. And then they get the Son of God and put him on the cross. And then they get Barabbas and they set him free to gun rape women and kill thieves. Let me tell you. When you become born again, when you're really filled by the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking to people who are born again outside, but they are not born again inside. When you're born again, regenerated by God, it is shocking how evil the world can be. It is shocking how evil the world can be. What is wrong is right, and what is right is wrong. And they have a wisdom to it. One time I was in UAE, United Arab Emirates, I was supposed to spend the night in a hotel and then go to Washington. And I'm sitting next to a woman who is a judge, an American lady. And she starts to ask me questions. How are you? Where are you from? You're from Uganda. Wow, how is Uganda? Da, 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 da. Oh, yes, I know this, I know that. And then she opens up a conversation. A foolish... <laughs> conversation. Qualifying sin. Speaking from a land position. You know, you Ugandans, you don't get it. You know, in America, this is this and that and that and that. How do you do this? She spoke. Then when we were almost coming out, I told her, look, lady. Number one, first and foremost, Uganda is a Christian country. (laughs) I repeat, Uganda is a Christian country. I don't know that the words in your, what do they call it, their pledge means a sense that you're one nation under God, indivisible and what. I don't know whether that stuff makes sense to you, but we are born again. So, sorry if... I said, she went to school and she can qualify sin because she went to school. The world in its wisdom knew not God. You're not God. You're not God. Someone has a problem with Uganda because Uganda still submits to God. They want Uganda to be a secular nation. No way. Tell your neighbor, no way. You're singing in your anthem, oh, Uganda, may God up, oh, Uganda, with God, God, who is God? Eh? Eh? I said, you have a problem. Praise the Lord Jesus. But how did she get there? Too many books. (laughs) Praise God. 
That is why God has to put us somewhere where we can silence the mouths of people. Where, to whichever level of smartness you get to, there is a power that can outsmart your smartness. My sister came to visit me Tuesday. She was on her way to my house. And she sits in a taxi. And these thugs think they are too smart. They trick her and trick her and trick her. And before we know it, they park her somewhere so far where she cannot scream. And they tell her, give us everything you have. And she has a brand new phone. Nice little smartphone. She believed God for it. (laughs) And they tricked her. Stop. They refused to stop. They drive on. These days, they don't have two, three guys. No. They are like three women, four guys, and then you think, yeah, this is a normal taxi. Kumbe, all of them are thieves. They're trying to be smart. So she said that she thinks three women, four guys. She's like, no, I think I'm safe here. And all of them are under one syndicate. She tells them, stop, they refuse, stop, they refuse. They take her deep there in a bushel somewhere. And they tell her, give us everything you have. Thank God for the gospel. (laughs) Christine told me on Tuesday and told me with what I know, I can't be robbed. She said, she sat in that car. She told the thief, look at my face very clearly. (laughs) Do you remember where you picked me from? There is a saloon there. Yes. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. I want my phone. Me, they don't steal me. She left. The guy brought the phone. (laughs) The thief carried the phone and brought it back to her. And told her, here is your phone. Please don't get me arrested. He was smart. Praise God. He was smart. Praise the Lord. The gospel is smarter. (laughs) The gospel is smarter. Praise the Lord Jesus. Anyway, that is why sometimes the prayer of this man is that God would show you inside wisdom. That you'd see wisdom from within. That you'll understand what it means to carry wisdom from within. Not from without. Because that's what delivers you. How you live inside here is how you live outside. How you think inside here is how you think outside. You remember what Corinthians chapter 6 where he says you are not straightened within us, you are straightened within your own bowels. Have you ever read that scripture? Is it Corinthians 6? Uh, give me the message. The message Bible says that we didn't fence you in. Tell anybody we didn't fence you in. He says the smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small but you're living them. In a small way. The wisdom of the world. Your lives are not small. Your life, oh, your life is not small. You're the one living it in a small way. You think you have to work for 20 years to have a million dollars. No. You don't have to work for 20 years to have a million dollars. There are families that have worked for centuries. And if you get all the money of the families all put together, they never have a million dollars. Yet, this is families, not one individual. There are families, if you look from the grandfather, great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, from the inception of money up to present, you can go through their line and realize that all the money put together can't be a million dollars. Why are they living small? It's because the world taught them to live small. When you are born, they used to tell you, my son, look after this money, we might be poor. They didn't tell you how to save to give. They didn't tell you how to save to build. Saving is wonderful. But not in a poverty mentality. Some people live poor to die rich. That's bondage. You know those people? Some of you know the old women we grew up with. She's poor. I don't have money for lunch. Please send me. I'm hungry. Then one day, she opens. She has like a small bag here. And it has a lot of money. Some of them, when they die, and then people are taking out things. They find her bag full of money like this. I said, okay. This woman was starving. You go to some villages. There are people who have a hundred cows and they can't buy shoes. Am I lying? That is bondage. And then when they die, God makes sure. 
The guys who inherit it want to spend it. They don't pray. No. They want. They are dying. They even calculate before the father dies. He says, uh, let me see. He has like this much. Okay, when he dies. They even promise on the father's death. Wait for me. My father is about to die. I'll pay you. We are supposed to save. It's godly. By the way, you have to save. But you save not in a poverty mentality. You save to build. You save to obey the voice of God to give. You save for that. But not because you are going to be poor tomorrow. That's a very wrong mentality. And it's killing Christians. You're living small lives. Your lives are not small. But you're living small. Why? Because of the wisdom of the world. I wish you would come from within. Understand the wisdom from within. Understand that treasure in earthen vessels. Understand who is in you. There are things that should not, cannot, will not happen to you because of whose child you are. Who you believe. What is inside you? Tell your neighbor, I live big. And I will live big. In the name of Jesus. Because that's who I am inside. I'm simply living outside what I am inside. Say amen. So we're talking of what eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. Let me give you a picture. You're broke. You rent a house of 30,000. No, don't laugh. It's serious. I've seen it. I've seen it with my eyes. Not in my life, but in the lives of some people. <laughs> Praise God. There's a man of God I met years ago. He came to me and told me, Apostle, they're throwing my stuff out for 30,000. And it was true. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you have a house, you're renting a house of what? 30,000. And the landlord has been knocking your door for five months. That means you failed to pay 30,000 for what? How much does that become? 150. You waited for some deals to come through and those deals refused and failed. Then you went to a shop. And then you registered in a book where you get stuff. The local people call it Aria Chitabo. You understand what I'm saying? Then the person says, I want sugar for this, a quarter of a kilo. Then they get a quarter. Then the person of the book writes, quote of a kilo, date and time. When are you paying me? Next week I'm expecting something. Okay. Then before next week you come. I want half a, half a, half a kilogram of rice. Half a kilo of rice. So you've accumulated until you can't pay. And then you see that shop and you're like, I, uh, I owe. Then you go to another shop. <laughs> Hi, my man. What's up? How are you doing? Ah, you look smart. Now, eh, there's a certain deal I'm expecting. Eh? Can you give me a pair of FRED batches? I'll pay them. Electricity. The landlord plugged it out. Because you are not paying rent, but you're also taking electricity. And that's an expense on the general rentals. So they plug your car room out. So you can't get what? Batteries. Then the next time, hey, mama, what's up? <laughs> Man, it's late. I'm supposed to eat dinner. But my money has been held up in an ATM. Can you give me some bread? Eh? Then even that shop, you feel it. Then you go to another shop. Then you eat mabandia there. Then you go to another shop. Then you go to another shop. Then you go to another shop. Until all the shops know you. The landlord know you. Then you turn to your relatives. Ah, my brother, how are you? You know, I've been thinking about you, but you know me, my problem. Can you lend me 10K? Then you go to that one. I'll pay it to you on Thursday. Then Fanero comes, you dodge them. Then you go to the person and say, give me another 40, I'll give you 50 once. <laughs> I won't have change when I'm paid. And then, <laughs> and then they give you what? A 40, then you get what? 50. And then you fail to pay that one. Then you go to another person, you borrow. Then that one also fails to pay. Then you go to another one and borrow. Then they fail to pay. Then you go to another one and borrow. Until the whole world is borrowed too. The shops, you're under loan with shops. Your cousins, your relatives, they see you, they dodge you, they refuse to receive your phone calls. You don't have money on airtime. WhatsApp is out totally. You can't do a Facebook. You can't do anything. And you're out. 
And then the landlord comes again the last day. Ba, 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 ba. Then you keep quiet like you're not in. You switch off the radio. You better not have a child. Because if you're in there, it's like, ah, you switch off the radio. The landlord knocks. I know you're in there. Mark open. Mark. Boo, boo, boo. You're in there. I know you're in there. I'm going to come back for my money. Then the landlord goes away. Then you go on your bed. Stressed. Disturbed. And then sleep. Text. In there, a dream comes. In the dream, you're in a limousine. They've put a red carpet for you. You're coming out. People are screaming. Maka, 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 maka. Then you enter Nambole Stadium. And people are screaming like... And you're hearing all that. And then you tell them Jesus is Lord. 30,000 people. You preach. You even remember the sermon very well in the dream. The lambs start walking. Apostle Emma tell me, what did the Lord do? Then you tell him, this man came when they were broken leg. The Lord healed. Hallelujah. And you, what has the Lord done? And then they scream. And then after that on the door, people are too many. They are saying, we want Mark. We want Mark. We want Apostle Mark. We want Apostle Mark. And they are screaming. And then you're like, ah, I think I need a chopper. In the dream, it appears immediately. You know the dreams. In dreams, anything can appear anywhere. Right? And then the chopper does what? Then it lands. Then after it lands, even the air is too much. You have to do like this. Then you sit in. Then they show people, there is Apostle Mark. Then you fly around to tell them bye. Then you look on the chopper and it has the name of your ministry. Then it flies up to Serena for dinner, for you to have a nice sleep. In Chigo, Serena. Then while you are at Chigo, you enter and then you go the side of food. Ay, 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 ay. Three cosmic, the line of food is like this. All of that is food for you. And the waitress gives you, Apostle, it's very nice to see you. Then they give you a plate. Wow. Then they go on the table and then they make sit down the table. Say, then as you get the knife, you wake up. I want to talk to a dreamer today. Today I came to talk to a dreamer today. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, has not entered the hearts of man that which the Lord has prepared for them that love him, but he has revealed it to us by his spirit. Sit down. And then you're torn. Should I stay in the dream? Why did I wake up? Why did I wake up? For some of you, it's deeper. You dream things that are not for your time. That's even more dangerous. Let me explain it. If you lived in 1987, 86, where they used to have 50 sittings, two sittings, huh? with funny men's faces, huh? 80 something, 70 something, there was a time land costed 100,000. You guys say, how much is that piece of land? 100,000. Then you get 100,000 and then you buy what? Now, today, if you say land is 100,000, People say, are you mad? Because 100,000 for some of you is lunch for two days. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what you call lunch for two days was one time a plot of land for somebody. During that time, of course, 50,000 had not come. In fact, all their dreams would be like, I dreamt when I had a lot of money. And I had two, two shillings, two, two shillings, bundles of two, two shillings. You, you see, because 50,000 had not come. Or somebody, probably then it was the highest, would be like what? 100 shillings, 
Ah, yeah, yeah, I had a dream. I had many bundles of 100 shillings, 100 shillings. But in that time, there must have been a man who said, I dreamt when I have 50,000, 50,000. And I said, yeah, yeah. but 50,000 is not a currency we have in Uganda. But that person dreamt it. That person dreamt it. That person dreamt it. That is how it seems like when we start to dream. That is what it seems like when Corinthians says that what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not entered the hearts of men. Some people say, oh, Fanero, wonderful ministry, Fanero. Fanero did not begin like this. No, no, no. Fanero began when I was in campus. When guys are going to eat dinner and lunch, and then you say, no, let me forego lunch. You enter the cathedral. You start praying. You don't even know why you're foregoing lunch. But there's something inside you telling you that when you wait in Tutinia or Chihulia, there's something there. I don't know what it is, but it can't allow me to eat lunch. Do I have a dreamer? Praise God. In the evenings, while some of our friends used to go to the hostels to watch 24, the series, you find yourself in fellowship, praying. You understand? You get slain, you become dirty, you become uncool. You stop looking cool. Because you're too... You're too... I don't know they understand what I'm saying. You look at women when they're pregnant. Because they have something inside First months, they can do anything, they can dress with But when they're about eight months there, something gets on them. They don't give a damn. They don't give a damn. She can put on funny slippers and go to work. And remember to work that, oh my God, I love the shoes home. But there's something in there that can't remind her that you're supposed to put on shoes. One time I was working in a health center. And I used to do preachers, post-test counseling, voluntary counseling and testings, reproductive health. I know a lot of that stuff. Immunization, what? Pregnant mothers, we knew how to teach them how to look after their children, what? How to check their bodies, what? Those things, nutrition. One time I remember I was telling them about nutrition. And a pregnant lady, who I am helping. (laughs) She put up her hand like this. Do you have a question, madam? Yes. It's not a question. Finish. <laughs> Say again. Tuko Oye. She spoke for all of them. And I was waiting for one of them to say, Wama mi wa. All of them kept quiet. And they looked at me with this eye of. I'm helping your bloody babies. I'm not the one who is pregnant. Am I communicating? That's why when you're around pregnant women, not these three, four months, those ones, no. But when they get seven months, eight months, understand, you can smell funny for her, yet you're her husband. But you married the guy. You said you loved him. You said I do. I can't do without you. No, the guy is smelling funny. They are putting on their husband's shirts. They want to eat food in funny places. Then you're like, eh? They crave crazy things. She be there at night, midnight. I want grasshoppers. <laughs> grasshoppers at midnight. And I realize this. There are cravings people with dreams have. There are strange things. You can sit amid these people talking and the conversation is enjoyable and you feel like it's no longer a conversation. You separate yourself. You say, I look at this proud woman. You think you're too old. Fanero is not, it's an old thing. It just began officially in 2014. But some people don't understand those days when we sat down on border borders at night, when it's cold. You understand what I'm saying? 
where the miracle was surviving a border border accident then the miracle was I survived a border border accident I even used to preach in those things twice it happened and that was my testimony I sat on the border border everyone crashed but they walked off healthy praise God I have the life which is of God and it was a testimony praise God in the time when people are saying ah it is too cold let me go home for you are sitting on a border border at 11 p.m. And that day you didn't get a sweater because it was too late. Then you get up at night. Then you get up at night, late at night. There was a time I used to reach and I didn't want to wake up my mom and dad. And so I used to go up in the back end eh, of the boys' quarters. And there's this maid. You knock, do, 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 do. She refuses. Why? Because she also doesn't want to be woken up at night. I thank God for my mother. Because the time my father would say, now it is late, nobody should go out. And then I got to and tell her, mommy, I have to preach in an overnight. People are waiting for me. He says, what? You have to preach? Yeah. And it's cold at night. Then you tell her, leave your phone on. You understand what I'm saying? Then you go at the gate. Eh? You know how kids tip to go to club? What is making you walk at night? You open the gate. I even knew how to open the gate without being hard. Then I go out. Then she comes and locks it. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you. <laughs> then I come back at night and I have to see a way how to communicate with her while the museum is still snoring. Then she comes at 4 a.m. Is that you, Grace? Yes, you're alone here. Yeah. <laughs> then in the morning, she said, Good morning, Daddy. Yeah? Good morning. How was your night? Did you sleep well? Yeah, yeah. We were preaching the whole overnight. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was border borders. It was punches who were beaten for the gospel. That's why it's a small thing for a man to write about me. It's a very small thing for a man to write about me. Oh, one day I'll never forget. One day I'll never forget. I went into a meeting. This lady had about 2,000 young people. And they were doing a school debate. I remember Prosy was there. And then I entered this meeting. And during that time, they had said to hear about Apostle Grace. I sat next to a guy. He started insulting me. Very painful words. He's not looking at me, but he's saying hard words. <laughs> he's saying these things. He's provoking my spirit. I'd never seen a devil walk with a man like that before. When the lady announced that that's Apostle Grace, the guy started insulting me. Abusing me without looking at me, but abusing me, abusing me, abusing me, abusing me. At first I went into victim mode and I said, why would somebody abuse me yet? I'm just preaching the gospel. What have I done to this guy? How can he hate me without cause? He didn't even know what I've been through or where I come from. He just had a silly room and he's abusing me. And then while I was in that angle of being emotional, the Spirit of the Lord told me, Shina, this is the devil. Give him a bleeding nose. I was supposed to get on that pulpit to speak about normal things of how children should live in Tosat. <laughs> I got on that pulpit and I preached a hard core message. Hard. And after 15 minutes I told them, who of you is ready to give your life to Christ as your Lord and Savior? About 300 young people raised their hands. And I told them, say Lord Jesus! And some of them were covered in, in Muslim attire. And after that, I went back next to the guy and I said, Who is laughing now? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah. Why? Because I know that our weapons are not carnal, but they are mine in Christ for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. I knew that I don't fight with flesh and blood. He has a demon on him. I have to give it a bloody nose. When they attack you for preaching, you preach deeper. When they tell you reduce volume, you speak louder. Why? Because there is something inside. 
That's why I told people, when you get this thing, some of you, they ask, now you go to every Thursday, you're a married woman, you've left your children home, they don't know. That you're doing something, not only for you, but for your children too. That's why I told people, me, I don't understand people who, who serve God a funny way. They are pleading with you to play them. Yeah, no, please play. They are pleading with you to come to do this. Do you dream? Do you have something? Is there something inside you? Oh, you're the one with a good voice. When you don't come, we don't rehearse. Please do us a favor and come early. Okay, where are you? We are waiting. You know she has the songs. Let's wait for her. For us, they never waited for us. I remember a time I was very sick in, in school. And they told me you were leading worship. Mama... I looked around and saw the nurse didn't see me. I pulled out the cannula and closed. And I went and led worship and came back and I couldn't put it back. <laughs> so they got me. But there's some that made me pull the plug out of that thing. Because for me, the gospel is life. When I go on my bed, that's what I dream. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you dream when they're beating you. No, for us, we don't dream when they're beating us. We dream when the lame are walking, the blind are seeing, cancer is living, HIV is coming out of human bodies. Why? Because that's what we were made for. Were you made for something? Then act like you have something inside you. Don't pray like you're doing God a favor, oh Lord. There are people who you can see they don't have vision. Without a vision, people cast you strength. You're holy. You're, mama, mama, mama. Pray like there's something inside you. Like that prayer depends on it to come out. I remember one time, I was in a hospital, and a lady was about to give birth. I'd gone to see another friend. The woman was screaming. You understand what I'm saying? And the way she appeared, I'll not define the appearance, because the appearance was too shocking for her not to know that she should not appear that way. But there is something that shifted attention to appearance and went inside. This guy had to come out, hook or crook. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you, you have very big things inside your life. They are so huge. But you're living your life a small way. You pray like normal people. You give like normal people. You fast like normal people. You minister like normal people. You do stuff like the way the world has taught you to do it. Because you will be like the world. You will not go beyond the world. That's why church is very predictable. And it's very painful that they can predict us. Anything unpredictable is dangerous. You'd rather be among the dangerous ones whom they can't predict than being predictable. Do you have something in there? Do you have something inside you? Do you dream of something? When you go on your bed, it might not be a physical dream, dream like you're dreaming. But do you sit down and envision yourself somewhere? Have you ever been in a place where you have something inside you? I haven't seen it. He has not had it. This is when now dreams become alive. That's what they call travailing in the spirit. As a woman with pangs giving her first child. Do you understand what I'm saying? Have you been there? Have you been in a situation where you feel like if something doesn't come out of you, you will die? Stop being comfortable. Stop doing predictable things. Stop praying like normal men. Stop serving like normal men. No. Serve God. Serve God. You might not be understood, you might be punched, you might be abused. No, get your attention from the haters. Set your eyes on things above. Just keep on doing what God called you. There's a person whose dream is small, I will understand. But it's a very frustrating thing, I tell people. When every time you look at the inside of you, and you look outside, and these two things don't match. And you feel like the woman outside is not the woman from within. The wisdom from within is not the wisdom from without. The person that dreams inside here cannot connect to the things that I'm going through. Yes, I'm broke. Yes, I'm beggar. Yes, I'm disadvantaged. Yes, I lost everything. My account is empty. But there's still something inside there telling me that there's something so big in my life. Nations are waiting for it. Cities are waiting for it. They are for a longevity. They are for a posterity. 
a livelihood for a generation to come. I feel inside. There is something that somebody has to see. I don't know how it will come out. But every other day I get to realize that I'm different from the person I laugh with. Why? Because I eat with them food. And after eating with them food, they go home and smile and sleep. And I can't sleep. Why? Because inside there. Inside there. Do you know how many dreams are dying without fulfillment? Do you know how many graces in this life are disappearing without realization? Do you know why I don't worry to die? It's because I'm in the center of the will of God. That's why I don't worry about this. I don't worry about loose. I don't worry. Because I know who called me. I'm living what I'm supposed to be. One time I remember they called me in an evening service and I was so sick. And I preached. And after preaching, I went out and coughed blood. And I came back again and preached. And I demonstrated power. And I went outside again and coughed blood. And I came back again and preached. And when I went to one of my relatives, my relative told me, you're not well in your mind. How can you do this when you're a sick man? It is because sometimes you can have something inside you that is stronger than what's in your body. Listen. There's somebody here that told you you have HIV. But the dream inside you is bigger than HIV. You will not die. They told you you have cancer. Stage 4. But the dream inside you is bigger than cancer. Stage 4. I outlived disease. Disease left and I'm still alive. Because greater is he that is in me than the one which is in the world. Greater. We have too much potential here. Too much. If you look at every individual and what they can achieve, if we set out to really dream big and allow God to do what He's supposed to be doing in our lives and give ourselves open to God to tell Him, God, deal with me. We have people who are going to finance the world here. We have people who are going to lend nations here. We, are going to, we have people who are going to bring revival, not to Uganda, not to Africa, not to Asia and Europe, the whole world. We have people here who have dreams that go way beyond their jurisdiction. They are bigger than your age. They are bigger than your connections. They are bigger than your family line. They are bigger than your heritage. They are bigger than your education. They are bigger than your connections. They are bigger than everything you have ever seen. They are bigger than your working career. They are bigger than your experience and expertise. They are just too big for any man to fulfill. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. It has not entered the hearts of men. But God revealed it unto us by His Spirit. Now open your mouth and start to speak to that which is within to come out. Come on. You've dreamt going to nations. Standing before millions of people. Healing the sick. Casting out devils. By their apostolic authority on my life. Be released. To fulfill your God given dream. In the name of Jesus. Come on take a minute and two. Just take two minutes and rewrite your story.
something. The nation has been waiting for you. Africa has been waiting for you. Europe has been waiting for you. Asia has been waiting for you. America has been waiting for you. The land has been waiting for you. The seas has been waiting for you. The media has been waiting for you. The economy has been waiting for you. You, 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 you. He said you are the head and not the tail. He said you are above and not beneath. He said I'll make you a wonder. I'll make you a wonder. Three, three. Somebody say something. Somebody make a prayer. It is not too late. I don't care how many years you've been struggling. I don't care how long you have struggled. It is not late. It is not late. It is not late. Speak to it. Speak to it. Speak to it. Tell it to come out. Masalala. Brakatala baye. Evangelist. Receive it. If you're a prophet and you're here, are you ready? Are you ready? Even if you don't know, take it in the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Oh, my choir is dead. Just put it here. Take it. Take it. Take it. If you're an apostle, raise your hands now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take it! Take it! Mashallah, let it Said you are the head. 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 Yes, there are many, but you are the head. Yes, there are many, but you are the head. And not the tail. Oh! Receive it, brother. Receive it. His nation. In the name of Jesus. Say his nation. Thank you, Lord. Somebody speak in tongues. This is the time. This is the time. Dreams are getting born. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Receive it. Enough. Supernatural power to demonstrate life. The lame will walk, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dumb will speak. Power! Power!
Come on. Speak in other tongues. And you want to be born again and you're not born again. Put up your hand and we pray with you. Come. Where are you? You want to be born again tonight. Come. Come. You want to be born again tonight. Come. Give me only two minutes and we'll be out of here. You want to be born again? Come. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and get born again tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Come. Come. Ask your neighbor. If they are not born again, encourage them to come. Oh, no, no. Thank you for encouraging him. If they are not, encourage them to come. 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 Hey, James. School. You're welcome. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. The devil has a bleeding nose tonight. We are snatching them out of hell into the marvelous kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, you who are here, repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died and rose again tonight I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life tonight I receive you as Lord and born again Amen The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash fenero. Venero, make manifest.